I'm not religious. My faith in God died of my godmother did. But just a few months ago, I saw my nephew's face for the first time. Now I can't help but think maybe heaven isn't somewhere we need to die to get to. I go to an elite college, which means I know the most profitable way to ship food from factory to supermarket. But I don't know any of the middle names of the woman who cook my lunch every day. I'm the son of a man who never misses a home-cooked meal or skips his dishwashing duties. The son of a woman who told me my name is an earthquake in waiting, she said. To hold it in your mouth like the most dangerous secret this world has yet to know. I'm only five foot eight on a really good day, but being built like a short story is a lesson in finding other ways to be the tallest tale in the room. My father, on, on protest, I, I saw students just, just like you, with fire in their eyes, flames rising from their chests to their mouths. Every time they opened, sparks of revolution shot out and caught into the fabric of society. Do you know how they put out wildfires? They introduce it to one another, a controlled burn, they call it. To destroy, destroy the fuel and starve the first fire out. The fire of protesters of Buddhist monks let the fire of automatic weapons until the only thing left burning was flesh. To even talk about this country, we have to recognize the land that we stand on, first and foremost. The city of Los Angeles will always belong to the Thongva people. And in this new United States, we have to recognize it is a land founded by immigrants. No one can be found illegal on stolen property. Stolen like how people were stolen away from other Africa as a slave to create a civilization that works against them. Stolen like how immigrants and refugees are stolen away from their children in an attempt for political freedom. Stolen like how Elvis stole rock and roll. So when you go and ask why the protest is looting Target, I have to ask you. What has corporate America ever done for you? I mean, can't you see the gentrification of USC of South Central? The privilege that these white supremacists, neo-Nazis have when they stormed the US Capitol. I mean, I think we need to recognize the problem here. My father, on, on protest. protest. I, I saw, saw faces, faces stolen in, in the depths, depths of night, night so quickly. quickly. Even their shadows don't know where they are. And do you think you're safe here in this white man's land? Do you think their laws will keep you safe? You talk about Constitution, Constitution. like it wasn't the same document that put 120,000 into internment camps, two, two million, million into, into reservations, reservations, four million, million into, into slavery. slavery. I can keep you away from school, prevent you from going to protests and rallies, but you inherited your ancestors' resistance. I recognize that flame. People, People who were burned, burned never, never get, get the, the fire that, that gave them their scars. scars. This is my body. Most days I reject the appearance of it because it is not the body I requested, but it must like me because it refuses to leave. I have struggled with accepting it since I was very young. It has always been curvier than most, full of imperfections, trying to be beautiful. It is not the healthiest, but my veins write the words in the self-help book I keep picking up and putting down in the quest to be better whatever that means. My breasts formed and grew faster than I knew how to handle them, and if I'm honest, I still haven't figured that shit out. These arms have always been strong and have been tasked to carry the weight of my family's burdens from the time I was five. While I have dropped it many times, I've somehow managed to carry this load and its ever-increasing capacity. One step, one step, one step at a time, praying that each one gets me closer and closer to finally laying my burdens down. My legs, once long and lean in my youth, grew to tree stumps whose roots never let me forget the path to the women from which I come, who sacrifices the soil that fertilize the land upon which I walk, clearing the way for those who are behind to follow. My back is scarred from the days before chickenpox vaccines. It aches with age that came before I could realize I was old enough for pain. And while it is not beautiful, it hurts most days and I rarely look at it, but when I do, it is a reminder 
that physical beauty is not that with which the Father exchanged my ashes for. Each small scar speaks to the pain of my childhood, each prick the strap of about the sting of an extension cord, the bruise of the PVC pipe, the racist epithets of children, the suitcases packed and dragged from place to place, the staring eyes of strangers in airports at the lone child with the airplane wings pinned. So the flight attendants know who to load on the plane. My mama told me the weight of the world is shouldered on the backs of black women. So why is no one trying to protect black women? Why don't our lives matter? My father, on, on protest, why, why do you long so much for the fire? This, this is the moment. moment. This, this is, is the movement. movement. We, we have, have to act now. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. I have, I have, I have to, to go. go. Now is the time for the movement. We cannot wait one more minute. We've waited too long already. How, How many, many more mothers, mothers have, to have to lose their sons before you do something? How much, much more blood needs to be shed before you move? How many more videos do we have to watch of black blood bleeding red onto the streets before you do something? I know quietly in protest and he said I was being disrespectful to our flag and those who fought for it? Those who fought for it? You mean my mother, my father, my uncle, and my partner? Oh. Okay, I see. Not all those who fought for it, just your select few. You, you didn't, didn't hear, hear me then. then. I tried to vote for change, but you kept taking away my right to vote. Call me illiterate, illegal. Remove my registration because I have the same name as my dead grandfather. Forced me to get an ID. Claimed there was too much fraud. Remove all the polling places in my neighborhood. Told me I couldn't vote by man. Refused to make election day a holiday so I can stand in those long ass lines. Just to vote, vote you out of office. office. Then said all of our votes were legally cast and then threw them out. I called my city council, my mayor, my congressman, my senator, and even the president. But your recorded messages played over and over, refusing me the right to representation in this racist ass system. You, you didn't, didn't hear me then. then. We marched across bridges in Selma, beaten and attacked. Our nonviolent request led by the peaceful, handsome preacher who tried to reach across aisles. Held the cold white fingers of his betrayers. You, you killed, killed him. him! Made him a martyr, and now you use his words against this movement. You, you didn't, didn't hear, hear us, us then, but, but you, you will hear us now. now. Oh, this movement must happen! You, you forced, forced it, it to happen. happen! I found my son shot to death. Skittles still warm in his hand, they were his favorite! Like, like stand, stand your, your ground, ground. like shoot to kill. kill! I found my son out of breath, begging for the simple right to breathe. And in his last breath, he still called out for me. Mama. I found my son dead in the street, naked and suffocated with a spit hood on his head. I guess you can't be black and have a mental illness. I found my daughter dead in her own home. Her only crime was the color of her skin, not even the service that she's done for her own community. The lives that she saved with her own hands could have saved their own life. You still won't say her name. Say her name. Say, say her, her name. name. I found my son shot dead in his car in front of his daughter and his girlfriend. I found my son in our backyard, dead from the police, hopping the fence, claiming his cell phone was a gun. I found my son covered, lying on the ground, still in his running shoes, still wet with sweat after being dragged behind a truck. I found my son dead on his couch, still holding the ice cream he was eating when the off-duty officer entered his apartment, mistakenly claiming him as an intruder in her apartment. I found my son dead in the street, still holding the CDs that he was selling. I found my daughter shot dead through her window while her nephew watched. I found my son hanging from a tree Surrounded by white men in white cloaks, posing for photos, beaming with pride. Take him down. Take him down! Take him down! No! This is my son! This is my son! This is my son! This is my son! This is your son! And your son! And your son! And your son! This movement has to happen now. Now! now! 
we march in to justice, justice for our sisters, sisters and, our and our brothers. brothers. We, we march in to justice for our daughters, daughters and our sons. We march in to justice for our sisters and our brothers. We march in to justice for our daughters and our sons. The people united will never be defeated. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. We are made to feel unwelcomed here no matter what we've done or how long we've been here. As a child, I regularly heard racist slurs aimed at my family, and now I'm hearing the same words used against my nieces and nephews. It is important to march both to show up for ourselves and to say, this is wrong. For decades, Latinos have chafed over aggressive policy and tactics, including at the hands of Latino officers. Over the past several years, hundreds of Latinos, mostly men, have been killed by police officers in California, Arizona, and New Mexico, among other states. Though national statistics are hard to come by, however, activists are now pushing for a more explicit conversation about over-policing in Latino communities. We've always known that police brutality is a black and brown issue, a poor people issue. But right now, it is imperative for non-black Latinos to both emphasize with black people and to recognize it is in our fundamental interest to change policing in our communities. We've always known that the black community has borne the biggest brunt of police brutality, but it's also clear that Latinos have suffered as well. There's a kinship of experience as a community. Historically, Latinos have aspired to the American dream, have aspired to whiteness, but we have a real active role to play in this fight. We can show that these fights are not separated and we are active conspirators in fights against anti-blackness. This is a huge chance to expand consciousness as a community and to recognize the contradiction of what kind of power do we and don't we have in this country that despite our size, we don't even have the basic needs met. This country does not eat without our people. Yeah, the people doing the work can't even keep their own families safe. The lack of power has to make us ask, what kind of respect do we have? How do we organize for dignity? I mean, it's like either way you're at risk. It's the same for black folks, we know that. We have to show up for each other. The people united will never be defeated. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. I still hear my brother crying, I can't breathe. Now I'm gonna struggle saying I can't leave. We are calling up the violence of these racist police and we ain't gonna stop until our people are free. I don't wanna be here. I don't wanna give my life to this cause. I don't wanna be idolized for courage, my outstanding achievements, or my noble qualities. I just want to be seen as a normal man who lives his life, going to school, going surfing, and hanging out with my friends. I was taught to, to believe that the police were the good guys, that they would save me whenever I'm in trouble and that they would help. And to be a polite kid, if I ever were to meet an officer, be polite, answer his questions, and do as I'm told. And I did. See, we elevate the police and other public servants, often calling them heroes. And in many cases, they are. I could tell you I was shocked when I saw the footage of Ahmaud Arbery, a 25-year-old black man being gunned down by two white men while jogging through a Brunswick, Georgia neighborhood. I could also tell you that I have full faith in the judicial system to ensure the men charged, 34-year-old Travis McMichael and 64-year-old Gregory McMichael are brought to justice. I could tell you that it could never happen to me, but I recently learned that it would all be a lie. Tried to ignore it, go on with my happy life, but I can't ignore it anymore because I will see it all again and again and again. And as I watch Aubrey's body crumble to the ground through the lens of his shitty phone camera, it wasn't anger, grief, sadness, or disillusionment I was feeling. It was fatigue. All those other feelings came to pass soon enough. They were brought up during conversations with my dad. They manifested while I scrolled through my timeline and saw the grainy footage replayed again and again. They began to swirl around in my head of the names and faces of those we lost earlier. Tamir, Trayvon, Walter, Freddie, countless others too. But all that other stuff dissipates in the end. Life goes on, you have responsibilities to attend to, and the passion that filled those, that filled that fire, flickers away. At least that's how it's always been. But that weariness you take on, as you see yet another black body reduced to rubble, 
that fatigue as you see their killers get to walk free? That's a lot harder to escape. But just a few weeks ago, I found myself in a similarly precarious position. I was walking to the beach, surf gear in hand, newspaper items, a pen, pad, paper in the other. I was going to write a story about people surfing amid the coronavirus pandemic. That's when I saw a police officer parked across the street. I didn't think anything of it, just our friendly neighborhood officer. That's when the officer bucked a U-turn, pulled up beside me, poked his head out of his window, and asked where I was headed. I told him I was a student working on a school newspaper. The words fumbled out of my mouth. The cop proceeded to park beside me, get out, and ask more questions. He mentioned that I loosely fit the description of somebody looking into cars. The cop then asked for my ID. I didn't have it. It's not like I can go buy anything. The cop then took down my name on his notepad and searched up my information on his dashboard laptop and he laughed. I was not amused. The cop then sent me on my way. The whole encounter had to have lasted 10 minutes, maybe less. The police officer was, for all intents and purposes, he was kind and respectful. But I like to think he sensed my unease and hastened our interaction as a result. But rather, it was a realization that for everything I am and everything I do, it could all be taken away so quickly. See, we live in a world where black life is criminalized, demonized, and simple actions for others are hazards for us. Aubrey was jogging. Trayvon was eating Skittles. Richard Collins was waiting for the fucking bus. I was walking. And now, I march. I still hear my brother crying, I can't breathe. Now I'm the struggle saying, I can't leave. We are calling up the violence of these racist police. And, and we ain't gonna, gonna stop until, until our people are free. free. When black lives are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When black youth are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. I grew up in a neighborhood that was heavily policed. I witnessed my brothers and my siblings continuously stopped and frisked by law enforcement. I remember my home being raided. And one of my questions as a child was why? Why us? Black Lives Matter offers answers to the why. It offers a new vision for young black girls around the world that we deserve to be fought for, that we deserve to call on local governments to show up for us, for our entire history of slavery and efforts to challenge it. The way that it's experienced by men has been at the center of it. And that has created a narrative about what anti-black racism looks like. That is accurate, but is not always entirely inclusive. Black women have the highest rate of homicide in the country, but repeatedly the killings of black women go unnoticed. Their stories tend to just sort of dissipate into the ether. We don't tell the stories of disrespect black women experienced. So not too surprisingly, when police treat black women in ways that are continuous with this legacy, we don't have the stories. A black woman gets killed and no one says her name. So I started collecting the names of black women killed by police and going to protests. I go with banners of the names of black women killed chanting, say her name, say her name. It is the reality of living life in a black body that makes you more subject to police violence. Now, if that body happens to be gendered as something other than male, it also makes you vulnerable to being misremembered. When black lives are under attack, what do we do? We stand up, fight back. When black youth are under attack, what do we do? Stand, Stand up, up, fight back. back! Which side are you on, friends? Which side are you on? Which side are you on, friends? Which side are you on? Justice for black children is justice for us all, and we will fight for justice until freedom is won. So I think race and racism is probably the most studied social, economic, and political phenomenon in this country but it's also the least understood. The reality is that race in the United States operates on a spectrum from black to white. That doesn't mean those who are in between don't experience racism, it just means 
The closer you are to white on that spectrum, the better off you are. And the closer you are to black on that spectrum, well, the worse off you are. When we think about how we deal with problems in this country, we often start from a place of trickle-down justice. So using white people as the control, we say, well, if we make things better for the white folks, then everyone else is going to get free. But actually, it does not work that way. We need to address problems at the root, and when we are dealing with what's happening in black communities, it creates an effervescence, right? So a bubble up rather than a trickle down. Let me give an example. When we talk about the wage gap, we often say that women make 78 cents to every dollar that a man makes. You've all heard that before. But those are the statistics for white women and white men. The reality is that black women make something like 64 cents to every 78 cents a white woman makes. We talk about Latinas, it goes down to about 58. If we were to talk about indigenous women, if we were to talk about trans women, it would go even further down. So again, if we deal with those who are the most impacted, everyone has an opportunity to benefit from that. Rather than dealing with those who are the least impacted and expecting it to trickle down. We need this because the global reality is that black people are subjected to all sorts of disparities. Most of our most challenging issues today. I'm an artist. I make shit. So I started making these things specific to the protests. Things that would be weapons in a spiritual war. Things that would give people a voice and fortify them for the road ahead. What we are seeing is thousands of black people showing up with very little infrastructure and very little support. Privilege should look like everybody here and those watching on the news at home showing up for black lives. It's not just about coming and watching people at a march, right? It's about how do you become that leader? whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your home, and believe that the movement for black lives is not just for us. It's for everybody. Which side are you on, friends? Which side are you on? Which side are you on, friends? Which side are you on? Justice for black children is justice for us all. And, and we, we will fight, fight for justice, justice until freedom is won. The United States has a long history of protest and activism. Young people have often been at the center of those protest gatherings. Protesters have advocated and demanded change for workers' labor laws, voting rights, civil rights, school desegregation, immigrant refugee rights, LGBTQ equity, racial injustice, gun violence, racial monuments, and more. A protest is an event or action where people come together to express an opinion about something that is going on in society. There are a variety of potential goals for a protest influence public opinion, draw attention to or share information about a perceived injustice, gain a wider audience, push public policy or legislative forward, learn more about an issue, connect with others who feel passionate about the same issue, speak one's truth and bear witness. A protest can also provide inspiration and a sense of belonging to something larger. The overarching purpose of protest is to demand change. Streets, our, our streets. streets. The people united will never be defeated. El pueblo unido, jamás será vencido. I still hear my brother crying. I, I can't, can't breathe. breathe. When black lives are under attack, what do we do? Stand, Stand up, up, fight back. back. Which side are you on, friends? Which side are you on? And, and we, we will fight for justice until freedom is won! Simon, Simon says, says! The game of Simon Says. You, you know, know how, how it goes. goes. When Simon Says do an action, you do an action. But, but you're, you're only supposed, supposed to do an action if Simon says. Simon says speak! Now, why isn't everyone speaking? You chose to play this game. How dare you ruin it for everyone else? Simon, Simon says, says you're, you're not, not listening. listening. If you don't listen, you'll never be successful. Simon, Simon says, says shut up. up! Simon says it's time to call them line one after the other. I, I said Simon, Simon says. says! Simon says will refer to me as Officer Simon from here on in. Officer Simon, Simon says, says know your place. 
Officer Simon says you are only as valuable as you are able. Officer, Officer Simon, Simon says, says there, there will be, be no handouts, handouts here. here. Officer Simon says there will be no questions here. Officer Simon says stand up straight. Get in line! Do what you're told! You, you must, must not be a good, good listener. listener! At this rate, you will not be going home. Simon says only speak when you are told to. Officer, Officer Simon, Simon says, says put, put down, down your, your sign. sign. Put down your sign. Officer Simon says, put down your sign! Officer Simon says, fix your face when you're talking to me! Set, Set it up straight. straight! I don't care that I didn't say Officer Simon said Officer Simon said it! So sit up straight and be still! Be still! Be, be, be still. still! Officer Simon says, be still! If you, if you can't, can't handle, handle your, your jail, jail cell, cell, how will you handle your casket? My son! My son! My son! My son! My, My son. son! My father, on, on protest! Don't, don't, don't you know your body, your body will burn, burn like kindling? kindling? Now look at your response to me asking you a simple question on your opinion. I know being a police officer is hard right now. The way I see it is this is a job and your actions and behaviors are what impacts the way the world runs. You're an old white guy in a position of power. Where I come from, people talk a lot of shit about people like that. But if you're a good cop, now is the time to prove it. Remember your morals, not the brainwashed, opinionated babble you're subjected to every day. Take some time. Think of all of the people who are part of minority groups that have made you smile. Think back in history of the oppression that people faced. Make those judgments and connections to the past and the present and how you want to change the future. I do believe in you. Right now, people are putting their lives out on the line, going to protest every day to fight for this cause. Just like bad cops ruin your reputation, bad people ruin minorities' reputations too. Lucky for us, you fight the bad guys, right? You fight for justice for all? Of course I know how to do my job. I've gone through all the, all the training and all the schooling. And I'm so smart. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. If you can finally see that there is a problem with your brothers in blue, you should use those morals to stick up for justice and call people out. Unless you're scared that snitches get stitches. Although that doesn't sound very moral of the brotherhood, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the system is set up whack. Most people in power abuse it because they know that they can. Especially cops, because those are the big, scary, tough guys who know how to beat you down, both physically, emotionally, and mentally. Have you seen the training for police officers or people in the armed forces? That's some intense stuff. Now those police officers go and replicate that behavior in society. Imagine how scary it must feel to walk down the street not knowing if you're going to come home safe because of the way that you look because of the color of your skin, because of your gender, because of your sexual orientation, because of your religion, because you're disabled, because of where you were born, because of your occupation, because of the way you look, because of the way you act, because of the way you were raised. People will form opinions based on anything. It's about your actions after those opinions are made. It's about wanting to make the world just a little bit easier for everyone. Doesn't that sound oddly familiar? Police officers have a look too. It's pretty easy to tell you're a cop just by the way you hold yourself throughout life. I mean, clearly, if police officers are abusing their power and no one in the Brothers in Blue fan club is there to say anything, it's left for the people to invoke change. We're gonna need to take our power back to do it though. Are you in? My father on, on protest. protest. 
I won't, I won't allow you to discover your heritage by joining the dead. dead. Some facts about myself. I'm 21 years old. I'm right-handed. I hate my middle name. And I don't know what it means to be a man. And for a while, I thought the weight room could tell me. But I know stories of men with shotgun barrels for arms who use their bodies as weapons. I've seen them shoot their mouths off and leave bullet holes in women's spirits. My sisters say they raised me to be a good guy, but I still have a set of knuckles swollen with the memory of teeth and blood, and I'm still learning to unlearn my own violence. Reminded every day that a righteous heart inside this body is just a gun with the safety left on. And I know the most beautiful thing about love is that it cannot be owned. I don't watch much TV these days, but I'm still a Nickelodeon kid at heart. So if you were to ask me, who loves orange soda? <laughs> I will tell you. But I've broken more of my own bones and promises in my life. And I'm still learning what it means to heal, but it's, it's been pretty painful. I have a heart the same size as a fist, and I didn't find self-love until I gave myself a beating. But I was the tree that fell in the forest when no one was looking and dared to make a sound. I am the meal this thing called depression has spent seven years trying to devour from the inside out. I'm living proof that, that I bit off more than I could chew. But I believe there is nothing more autobiographical than a scar. So each time, see these remains of the barcodes I've carved into my skin. I read of a story of a battle I win every day. I'm both black and boy, which means I am the knife that threatens to slip the neck of silence and let everything bleed song. I am a song. I know all of this and I'm still learning what it means to be human. So trying to figure out what, it, what this thing is, a helium balloon called happiness. They have charisma down to a science, but most days I still have less confidence than English. Still learning what it means to be human without being whole. And every night, the sky opens up its mouth and swallows the sun in a single gulp just to make room for the moon. <laughs> what a wonderful way to live life, to be full of so much light, but to want so much more. I know I don't want to be a martyr, so please don't make me one. My father on, on protest. protest. You, you are, are too alive to be a martyr. To even talk about this country, we have to recognize the land that we stand on first and foremost. The city of Los Angeles will always belong to the Dongo people. And we must recognize that this new United States is a country founded by immigrants. No one can be found illegal on stolen property. You call the Mexican people drug dealers, rapists, and criminals. Well, it seems as if you forgot the, the Southwest border, La Frontera, the soil I soak my sweat, the land I call home, words belong to Las Zapotecas, Los Coras, Mystique, Mexica-like warriors. Indigenous people who were enslaved, raped, and murdered by white men. Kind of look like you. Did I ever teach you the colonization of my ancestors? The way these men would create a line so thick between us and them, a border so brutal, any bold brown man who dares to cross over can die in the name of American imperialism. Or did they skip all that in history class? Have you read over Operation Weapon? The Zoot Suit Riots in Los Angeles, the, the Great Boycott in California, the, the Poor People March in Denver, SB 1070 in Arizona, the lynchings in Texas. Have you read over the suffrage of brown hands? Always fighting to stay protesting. The man marching for freedom. No. Let me guess. Your history 
painted you a picture of Mexicans who kind of look like savages, freeloaders, criminals, free crop pickers, farm workers, your maids, and maintenance men, right? So you decided to take that same brush and paint the same picture for white America, claim that we flow in like water, like dirty brown water flooding the pearly white streets of American cities. Well, let me tell you, the flood is coming now more than ever, and we, us wetbacks, are in fact the river. And the river is ancient. The river runs deep. And the river will take no prisoners on election day. So keep on telling them you're going to build your wall. And watch the Latino vote all the way from California to Arizona to Chicago to New York. When you finally see all of our fists raised together, this land is ours for the keeping. And we ain't going nowhere. We're here to stay. My father on, on protest. protest. Don't, Don't you know, know where you come from? from? You, you inherited, inherited your ancestors' resistance. These feet are small-ish. <laughs> they have always looked good in sandals. Uh, and I've always loved to look at them. They don't look like anyone else's feet in my family. And maybe they were the indication that I was to be different. That they were designed to walk alone in a family of many. To discover foreign lands with no other companion than the soundtrack in my brain that never shuts off. To, to have the courage to keep walking even when you cannot see what is behind you. To keep walking when you're afraid of what is ahead. To take that next step even when you can't see the ground beneath your feet but have to trust that it will be there for you. Because walking backwards is an impossible feat no one ever taught you to do and now is not the time to learn. <laughs> I love my skin. While it leans on the dry side, it is always smooth, soft, and silky brown. From a young age, I was taught to care for it with delicate touches of love. Every day, perform beauty rituals like Ruth preparing for Boaz. I soak it, cleanse it, pat it dry, apply ointments and fragrances, anointing it to be kissed by the sun. This romance rendezvous, blending my melanin with the nutrients of vitamin D, somehow making it even more beautiful. And while I love my skin, the red bones overlaid with chocolate, I still find it difficult to accept that I'm hated for the very skin I love. Is the hatred envy of its beauty? Does it overwhelm your senses? Forcing rebellion against anything that might disprove Lily Whiteness's status as the leader in the pageant of beauty? <laughs> well, you may think as you must, but know this. I did not ask for this skin, but I am damn proud that I have it. And the fact that you hate it only fuels my passion for it. For there are more in this world with skin like mine. Our melanin is powered by the sun. And when we raise our fist in protest, the strength of all the ancestors unites us as one. Brown skin is growing in power. And this time, the darkness will overcome the white. Get ready for the surge of power that is coming for you. My father on, on protest. protest. I, I wanted, wanted to, to keep, keep you safe, safe at home. home. But I saw the fire in your eyes, the flames rising from your chest, your mouth poised to protest. It burns within you. And so you must. <laughs> on my way home from the protests on 7 June, I felt an overwhelming impulse to climb onto the plinth, just completely driven to do it by the events which had taken place right before. Seeing the statue of Edward Colston thrown into the river felt like a truly historical moment, huge. 
when I climbed onto the plinth and raised my arm in a black power salute, it was totally spontaneous. I, I didn't even think about it. It was like an electrical charge of power was running through me. My first thoughts were for the enslaved people who died at the hands of Colston and to give them power. I wanted to give George Floyd power. I wanted to give power to black people like me who have suffered injustices and inequalities, a surge of power out to them all. This sculpture is a dedication to my mother, to my daughter, to black people like me. It's something to feel proud of, to have a sense of belonging, because we actually do belong here. And we're not going anywhere. This sculpture captures a moment. It happened during the news and the worldwide ripple effects of George Floyd's killing, all of which I have been following. My friend who knew about this showed me a picture on Instagram of Jan standing on a plinth in Bristol with her fist in a black power salute. My first thought was, how incredible would it be to capture her in that instant. It, it is such a powerful image. I, I felt it had to be materialized forever. The, the public realm feels so vital at the moment as a space to activate ideas and create change. I feel it is essential for public art to play its part. We are not putting this sculpture on the plinth as a permanent solution to what should be there. It's a spark in which we hope will continue to bring attention to this vital and pressing issue. We need to keep highlighting the unacceptable problem of institutionalized and systemic racism that everybody has a duty to face up to. This is not a new issue, but it feels like there has been a global tipping point. It is time for direct action now. Keeping the issues and experiences of black people's lives in the public eye and doing whatever I can to help is so important. Those of us who have privilege have a duty to be part of the change. Something that Desmond Tutu said resonates with me strongly. If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you've chosen the side of the oppressor. I think this sums up where we've gotten to a point where white people need to be allies and white people in positions of power need to speak up and actively combat racism. For me, this has meant taking time to educate myself, listening to others and find meaningful ways of contributing. A surge, a surge of, of power, power is an, is an original, original work, work created and devised by Kendall Bryant, Samantha Cope, Trish McCall, Alex Herano, and, and our director, director Shante, Shante Caraballo. It includes, it includes the, the following. following. Poetry, Tongue Valam by Alex Herano, Will You Break the Silence by Andrea Hope, Simon Says by Ashley Davis and Umpa, My Father on Protest by Koi the Poet, Facts About Myself by Tucker Bryant, we're here to stay by Mercedes Holtry, and this is my body, the movement is now, and my son Simon by Shante Caraballo. Pros, purpose and power by the Anti-Defamation League, an interview with the founder of Black Lives Matter, Latino Black Lives Matter protests, and they want change for themselves too by Jennifer Medina. Sorry, Candace Owens, but black people are looking for a martyr by supermodel Sonia. Pros, another black person is now a martyr, I'm tired of it, by David Subs. Hashtag say her name. Spotlight on black women killed by police by Robin Young. What does it mean to protect black women by Kia Smith? Courage is contagious by Damon Davis. A joint statement by Mark Quinn and Jen Reed. Drama, ethics and egos by Samantha Cope. Songs, protest chants by various artists and original music by Alex Serrano. The reasons why we wanted to do this together are so important. This is an amplification of black people's ideas and experiences. Of the past, the present, and, and all, all our hopes, hopes for a better, better future. future. Dear friend, friend, will you hold my hand, sit by my side, and listen to my pain? Will you welcome discomfort as my tears flow through you like rain? Will you bow your head in prayer with me? as the path revealed turned rough, remembering that prayer, prayer rarely, rarely changes, changes things, things rather, rather prayer changes us. Will you strive to be a true friend to me, not just at work or school? Will you stroll around my neighborhood? Invite me to your pool? 
Will you tell my story as vastly more than tales of struggle and strife? Will you utter the dreams of scholars and queens, the, the bright, bright and, and bold, bold of life? life? Will you consider both my future and my history? Will, will you, you ensure, ensure that, that evil also, also applies to opportunity? And will you cry out when the beast of injustice bites? Will you hold our country responsible to uphold all of our rights? Will you embrace the many questions we'll face along the way? With faith and love. Will, will you, you rise, rise up? up? And will you rise for the well-being of mankind? Its peace and security are unobtainable. Unless and until its unity is firmly cemented. Will, will you, you be, be the surge of power this country, country needs? Will, will you? you?